What has a full hot? What blind shit? What? Hi, I'm Beryl, and the theme for today's episode is rice paper. To understand why it is rice paper, we have to go back. Way back to a toast episode. This one. Here I am using pork floss. I then made an entire episode about pork floss. I'm Beryl, and the theme of today's episode is pork floss. And in that episode, you can see me making a rice paper pizza. I then had extra rice paper that I also did not know what to do with. Before we get into the video, I want to tell you about the artist today. Her name is Jen Kershaw. She's based in Ontario, Canada. She does amazing still lifes that are in the tradition of kind of Dutch still lifes. And you will also see that there is a large painting of a pickle, which I'm obsessed with. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with the dish that inspired all of this, Vietnamese rice paper pizza. My name is Lynn and I live in San Francisco, California. A great way to use pork floss is to make ban chang nung, or Vietnamese pizza, a popular street food. It's grilled rice paper with pork floss, egg, and laughing cow cheese, or really anything you want. First, you take a dry piece of rice paper and you put it over heat. Usually it's done over coals, but a frying pan works, it just takes a little bit longer. Then you add some egg, laughing cow cheese, lots of green onions, and pork floss. It can be a little hard not to go overboard on the toppings, but it really helps to cook it faster when you don't overload it. It's crispy, warm, sweet, and savory. Vietnamese food has a lot of textures and flavors, and this dish really exemplifies it. Grilled rice paper has this great crispy and chewy quality that you really can't get with anything else. So while you can customize the toppings however you like, the grilled rice paper is essential. When it's no longer translucent, fold it in half and enjoy! Okay, there's like a Vietnamese pizza using rice paper. I didn't even know that you could do this with rice paper. I... I oh my god. You know when you bite something before you even swallow it, you know it's amazing? This is truly game changing. Holy sh... Everybody make this. The end. I'm like giddy. This is so delicious. <laughs> it's simple and it is so good. There are so many flavors and textures. The rice paper is like crunchy and crispy, but very thin. And so you're not getting like a ton of breadiness in a bite. It just, you're really letting the inside of this like pizza shine. I was gonna use sweet chili sauce and then I remembered that I just bought this hot chili oil and I really wanted to do that. Actually, it is made by one of you all, so I'm gonna leave a link in the description if you are interested. It's honestly so good and it's really good on this. There's so much amazing flavor. I love laughing cow cheese. It's honestly like, it's a simple pleasure, you know? The pork floss in this um, adds like a really nice saltiness and again, like a chewiness. It's really, really nice. Like, I will make this again. No doubt. This also took like five minutes to make. This was so easy. This is my last bite, and I'm honestly sad. This was so delicious. It is 100% going into my rotation. I really, really, really recommend you guys try this, especially using the rice paper. It is so awesome. So for the next dish, a lot of you tagged the YouTube creator Mina Rowe. I found this recipe and she agreed to talk about it on the channel. Hey Beryl, I'm Mina and I'm from Berlin, Germany. I've got a YouTube channel as well, it's called Mina Rome and I tend to post some, you know, fun and, and quirky recipes over there. So you have some leftover rice paper at home. I would say go ahead and make some rice paper bacon. It's that that's a good idea. There are many different ways on how to make rice paper bacon, but this is how I like to do it. Provided you've got some good barbecue sauce, it actually tastes quite authentic, I would say. When I made this for the first time, I was definitely surprised by first of all how realistic it looks, how realistic just the texture is, and just also by how yummy it is. It's so good. It's crunchy, savory. To me it tastes like bacon, but like 
bacon minus all the craziness. So just like a light version of bacon. I would say anybody who enjoys this sort of smoky barbecue type flavor is gonna like this recipe. I've given this to some, some quite skeptical family members before and they all really enjoyed it. You should definitely try this, you can put this stuff on anything, you can put this in a salad, which I've done before, and if you happen to be wanting to eat less meat, then I feel like this could be a good thing to add to your diet, you know, giving your meals still that meaty flavor. Vegan food still gets a bad rep sometimes, sadly, but I feel like it's a lot better than it was a couple years ago. And I agree, vegan food can be boring, but it can also be so good and it can open up your mind in new ways. So yeah, I think it's an overall a cool thing to do. Okay, so we've got vegan bacon. Honestly, like, it looks like bacon, which I think is half the battle, right? To make it look like the real thing. Also, just so you guys know, I love bacon, so. <laughs> what? I would have never thought in a million years to bake rice paper. Okay. This is wild. Does it taste like bacon? No, like no, but it tastes really good. The barbecue sauce with the mustard and the vinegar, there's like a little bit of a tang to it. Oh God, there's like something here. There's a little bit of a tang to it. I am so surprised by how crunchy it is. Like there's a little bit of chewiness because like this is rice paper, but I don't, I, f I don't know, okay. So I've got a BLT here. Let's try it like, you know, with stuff. Oh my God, I'm getting bacon vibes. Oh my goodness. Like I know that this isn't bacon and I was fooled for a minute. Well, color me amazed because I was not actually expecting it to totally, absolutely work. <laughs> Although, I was looking through Mina's channel and she has like a ton of vegan foods that seem like honestly good, even if you're not vegan. This is game changing to me. I feel like that person in the margarine video like, I can't believe it's not butter, but it's like, I can't believe it's not bacon. I also just think I would, it's, 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 Okay, next recipe. Hello, Benny. Hello, everybody. My name is Fulong, and I am from Hanoi, Vietnam. Currently, I'm living and working in London. So I think with your leftover rice paper, you should have a go at making this shortcut wing guan, which is the Vietnamese steamed rice rolls. Wing guan is a very popular breakfast choice in Hanoi, where I'm from. Traditionally, a ladle full of very thin rice flour mixture is poured on top of a cotton sheet over a boiling pot of water. But using rice paper, means that we can skip this step entirely as it requires skills and tools that are not easily available abroad. I only recently discovered this rice paper hack from a Vietnamese cooking group on Facebook called Il Bib. So the idea came from a genius realization of the chemistry between Meng Guan and the rice paper. They are basically the same thing um, one is made fresh to order and the other is air dried. So by soaking and steaming the rice paper, you can bring it back to its original state, which can be very similar to Wang Wun, which is the fresh steamed rolls. Genius! It makes me feel like I can just transform my tiny little kitchen in London straight back to those tiny little stores eating fresh Wang Wun made to order. I think people should try it because it's such a nice, fun activity to do with the whole family and also it's a, it's a new way to enjoy your rice paper as well. So, good luck everybody! Okay, first of all, I am wearing overalls. <laughs> Rajat bought me them and um, I think I might be an overall person. Something I wasn't expecting. Okay. I have like a steamed rice roll hack 
And I think that this is super cool because there's no way that I'd be making a normal rice roll. The one thing I'm gonna say is I don't trust the structural integrity of my rice roll. And I know that because I broke one of them already. Yep, it broke. The inside is filled with ground pork and I had these dried shiitake mushrooms that I rehydrated. Just to say this, buying dried mushrooms is the thing that I think we're all sleeping on. Like fresh mushrooms are fine or whatever, but like buying the dried ones at the Asian market is so the way to go. It's the best. This is hard to eat, <laughs> but it, <laughs> am I, I don't even know if I'm eating it the right way. Mm. Actually, I guess it's not that hard to eat. The rice paper doesn't have much flavor, but the fish sauce dip, yummy, yummy in my tummy. I love fish sauce. It's just so good. And the lime juice in this makes it like super tangy and yummy. My sister went to Vietnam for her honeymoon and she said that she had these for breakfast all the time there. Fish sauce is one of those sauces that I feel like divides people. I'm firmly on the I love fish sauce side of the line. I just think it's so good and it's so good with pretty much everything. How do you guys feel about fish sauce? Is there? I feel like there's something in my tooth. I don't know. This is a very cool hack. Definitely into it. The next recipe we're doing is also a hack. And this comes from another YouTuber who you guys recommended I check out for this recipe. And it's super cool, so I'm very excited to try it. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Sanggyeong Longast. I have Sanggyeong Longast YouTube channel that I show you guys how to make delicious, authentic Asian food. You should make this trendy rice paper tteokbokki for sure, hands down. Tteokbokki is number one Korean street food. I growing up eating tteokbokki on the street. It is rice cake that simmered in this red, spicy and sweet savory sauce. So compared to traditional tteokbokki, rice paper tteokbokki, the flavor, the sauce, everything is exactly the same. Only one thing different is the texture of the rice cake. Because we made from the rice paper, it has a slightly more chewier taste. And, but the really great part of the rice paper tteokbokki is that you can stuff the rice paper whatever you want. So I saw a lot of people stuffed with cheese. They like nice cheesy stuffed tteokbokki. Ah, who can say no to that? I do eat tteokbokki a lot because it's one of my soul food. Um, after I moved to Hawaii, finding tteok, the rice cake, the main ingredients for tteokbokki is really not that easy. So I started making rice paper tteokbokki a lot more often than usual. When you buy it into rice paper tteokbokki, it is chewy, it is hot, warm, it is spicy, sweet, just deliciousness. Tastes like Korean street. You should try rice paper tteokbokki because it's so trendy. I know you have rice paper somewhere in your pantry. Don't you want to know what it tastes like? Absolutely you do. Okay, I have rice paper tteokbokki and this is super exciting because if you've ever had tteokbokki, then like you probably are obsessed with it and everyone who has ever had it is pretty much obsessed with it because it's so good. And if you've never had it, this is your chance that you should take this as a sign that you need to try it. Okay, um, let's find one here. Come here. Please don't fall off my chopsticks. Okay, so this one's made with right, what, right, 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 right. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> this one is made with white rice paper. I had brown rice paper left over, but I bought the white rice paper because like that's what the pokey looks like, so I wanted to try it with that one. Tastes like oh my god, it tastes like the real thing. It tastes it tastes like the real thing. Oh my god, this is so cool. This is so cool. This meat, like all of you who don't necessarily have access to an Asian grocery store but wanted to try tapoki, like now you legitimately can. And I didn't even stuff mine like Sung Young said to do. Like I didn't put cheese in it and I really should have put cheese in it. Okay, this is um, the brown rice paper. 
Tastes the same. <laughs> wow. I love sauces like this. Like it's water and then you just add some stuff at hand and it's like instantly ready. It's not like one of those sauces you have to simmer for a while. Like no, you add it, it's done. And I like that. Okay, so also I will say I did two sheets and I did three sheets. Definitely two sheets is fine. Three sheets are like, these are like a little thick, thick boys. I think like the two sheet one is um, the way to go. Ooh, I'm excited to make this again and stuff it with cheese. Sung Yang said that these are a bit chewier than the more traditional type and like I agree, but like I like the chewiness. That's the texture that I like in these. I just can't believe how well this works. It's so good. This is so amazing. I, I feel like I'm just like obsessed with every recipe, every single recipe I love. Hi, Beryl. My name is Mayan. I live on Kibbutz Hanatan in Israel, as you can see behind me. I think you should make rice paper burekas with your leftover rice paper. This recipe was one that I came across when I was trying to find a recipe to make with a group of friends who were some vegan, some on diets, and so we decided to make these. Traditional burekas are made with puff pastry, and they're a lot crunchier than these, but these are also really, really good. So basically what you do is you take your piece of rice paper and you soak it in water, so it's kind of malleable, and then you put a filling in the middle. You could either do mashed potatoes, which I have here with olive oil and salt, or a cheese mixture, which is cottage cheese, just a savory cottage cheese, not a sweet one, creme cheese, which is kind of like somewhere between feta and cream cheese, mozzarella, an egg, and some cornstarch. And what you do is you take a tablespoon of your filling, place it in the center, and then you kind of fold it up into a parcel. And then you bake it or fry it or air fry it, I guess, for 15 to 20 minutes or until kind of golden brown and crispy. It tastes kind of like cheesy and crunchy, like mac and cheese or uh, mashed potatoes, breadcrumbs. It's very, very good. And I think you should make it both because it's a social thing make it with a group of friends and because it's light and simple and very very good okay so I made two kinds of barracas I did the potato filling and I did the cheese filling I also want to say that I let these cool down before I started recording so we're not gonna be burning our mouth this time no siree oh my god it's hot I'm gonna cut that out. Ha! Why is it so hot? What the shit? What? Okay, I probably should have known that by me saying that, that that would happen. But that was like really hot. <laughs> and like, my tongue hurts. <laughs> the cheese one's gonna be worse. I know it. There's no way it's not hotter. It's cheese. I'm gonna like rip it open. Well, that filling is good. Yum. <laughs> the rice paper is like a little bit hard to bite through. It's like a little too chewy almost. And I thought that the air fryer would make it really crispy, but maybe I should have put it in the oven. It's also like the bottom where I folded it over um, on the four sides. That's kind of hard to bite through. Like that. Between the two, I'm definitely on the cheese, cream cheese side. It's absolutely delicious, like I love this filling. I had some explosions in my air fryer and like the cheese just like burst out. Maybe I overstuffed it. My aunt did say one tablespoon and like I really think I did more than a tablespoon. But like I got excited, it's hard, you know? So the next dish is by another YouTube creator who like everybody tagged and it just so happens that I did know her and she agreed to be in the video. It is the queen of YouTube shorts, Lisa. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Wynn and I am based out of Kansas City in the United States. I'm also a fellow YouTuber and so very excited to be a part of this video. When you asked me if I had any recipes to use with leftover rice paper, I was like, I got you. But then when you asked to steer away from spring rolls because most people have already heard about it, 
I was like, shiz. Because honestly, within my family growing up, we only used rice paper for spring rolls. But fortunately for me, my sister-in-law's mom shared a recipe with me that we tried last weekend and it was absolutely amazing. And it's easy to make, so I'm so excited to share it with you. It's basically fried rice paper filled with shrimp and pork paste. Sounds interesting, I know, but bear with me. It is equal parts shrimp to pork paste, and the pork paste you can find at the Asian grocery store it is called Yaw Sum, and it already has been seasoned lightly. So what you wanna do is season the shrimp with salt, pepper, granulated chicken soup base, and fish sauce. Then you're gonna grind that up. Then you're gonna mix that with the pork paste. The color is going to look very weird, but just trust the process. Wet your rice paper in warm water and then brush on that mixture on the inside. Then you'll just apply a thin layer of the shrimp and pork paste, fold in the sides of the rice paper, and then fry it in oil until both sides are golden brown. And that's basically it. You can eat it by itself or you can serve it with lettuce, cilantro, cucumbers, any type of greens that you would like to. And you can also dip in fish sauce. You would think it's a heavy snack being fried, but it's actually pretty light. The interior is springy, the outside is crunchy. It's the perfect mix and I think you will like it. I am so excited to try this one. I love cutting things with scissors. This is something that I learned about kind of recently in my life. I did not grow up using scissors as like a knife. It is so much more fun. <laughs> I had to make my own pork paste because I couldn't find it in the store. I'm gonna leave the recipe that I followed. It was very easy to do. Yum, fish sauce. This is so good. <laughs> I cannot believe I made this. It tastes like something that you would get at a restaurant. I'm feeling like the cat that got the cream right now. Yum. Also, I love fish sauce. Have I said that in this episode already? I love fish sauce. Oh. Everything on my plate is crunchy. I love that. A crunchy plate. No soft foods here, no siree, no siree. Whoops. I've watched a lot of Lisa's videos on YouTube and um, she like has really inspired me with rice paper. I wanna make these with like so many different types of fillings now because folding it up that thin and having this like flat pancake, you could put anything in this. like. If you wanted to do vegetarian, like a kind of like spiced tofu would be so good in this. Uh, what else can we put in? Bananas. That's kind of like Toron maybe from Philippines. Mmm. The possibilities are endless. This, <laughs> so amazing. Like even if you can't follow this recipe exactly, just making like a thinly stuffed rice paper packet and frying it, do it. Do it, it is so, so good. Okay, last dish is from another YouTuber. <laughs> it's like all the stars coming out today in my rice paper episode. Um, okay, last dish. Salut Beryl. My name is Alex. I live in Paris. So I do have a YouTube channel just simply called Alex. It used to be called French Guy Cooking, and it's all about food and my passion for cooking. So, if you have leftover rice paper, then you could go a lot more wrong than using it to steam fish, especially salmon. It's a dish that I do pretty often, so maybe once a month, but overall it's just a, a gateway. Once you understand how this dish works, you can expand and do way more recipes with the same concept. So the dish is pretty simple. You basically place a nice, plump, thick piece of fish, any fish you like, in the center of a rice paper flour, and you wrap the fish in it. You can add a few vegetables, just make sure to have them sliced super thin so that they cook almost instantly. The idea is that the fish is gonna be cooking inside this wrapping and so the flavors are gonna intensify. To cook that dish, you want to steam it. It's gonna taste clean, it's gonna taste simple, but very enjoyable for weeknights. Super enjoyable. So in the past, I used to cook fish en papillote, as I would call it, I mean wrapped fish, but using aluminum foil or parchment paper, none of which are edible, to my knowledge. 
I don't know, I think it's more convenient. <laughs> I wish you good luck with that recipe. See you. Bye bye. Ciao. Okay, so ending with a bang was actually more like ending with what was the most complicated recipe. Of course, it was from the French guy. <laughs> um, I completely messed it up the first time and I had to redo it. Uh, fork. The second time, it's better. There is like, like a little bit of holes. Also like his video, his piece just looks a lot like more impressive than mine. <laughs> It tastes nice. I'm having the same issue that I had with like the Barreca's where I feel like the rice paper is like a little bit too chewy. It's hard to break. Like if this was fried, it would be really good. There is like a ton of flavor. The salmon is super, super flavorful. I like the idea, like I've done salmon in a packet before and so I totally know like where this is coming from. And I do like that you can eat the wrapper a little, um, but it was hard to make. New York City sirens. New York City sirens. Oh. The salmon tastes like... My hands are like a little... whatever. I'm curious which of these recipes you would be willing to try and if you are going to try any, like, tag me on Instagram. I love seeing it. I will see you all next week. Bye bye <laughs>